From 1776 to 1913, $1 was equal to $1. There was a little bit of fluctuation around the two wars, but a dollar is worth a dollar. Since 1913, a dollar is now worth three cents. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have Chief Investment Advisor Mark Yusko discussing organizations that he says are actually worse than FTX. During the time when trust companies were vying to become the dominant financial institutions in the United States, JP Morgan and Rockefeller actually spread false rumors about the insolvency of the Knickerbocker Trust, leading to a bank run. In response, they pledged $25 million of their personal funds to prop up the banks and eventually devised the Aldrich Plan, which established a central bank with the power to create money outside of federal control. These are just a few of the actions that a group of influential individuals in the early 20th century were exposed for. Yusko also discusses Bitcoin and how these companies have affected the stock and crypto market today and what we can expect moving forward. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content we do here. Let's get right into the video. It was a sinister, and I, I use that term intentionally, mm -hmm. a sinister plot by a very small group of people. Um, basically, J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, uh, who was the son-in-law of Amory Aldrich, and Amory Aldrich was really the architect. In fact, there's another amazing book that no one's read. Uh, it was written in 1910, while the whole Aldrich plan was being created. Because what happened is in, in 1907, there were a number of trust companies that were popping up in the United States that were competing to be new financial institutions. And J.P. Morgan didn't like that. His famous quote is, I like a little competition. And this company, Knickerbocker Trust, was stealing all of his customers. Yeah. Yeah. And so, as tough guys are prone to do, he spread some rumors, perhaps false, that Knickerbocker Trust was insolvent. insolvent and right? if you go yeah. to Wiki and look up Bank Run, that's okay. the famous picture yeah, of yeah, the guys yeah, yeah. in their top hats and the women in dresses and the umbrellas mm -hmm. and they're standing outside the bank. That was the bank run. And JP Morgan and his friend John D. Rockefeller said, ah, we'll save you. 25 million bucks, which back then was a lot of money. They pledged 25 million of their personal money to backstop the banks. Literally, like the scene in It's a Wonderful Life where Mr. Potter is bailing out the bank and the guy's dotting his brow and you know they're calling <laughs> the building and loan to say, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll save your guys too. And they're like, no, you're not stealing our, our business. So from that point, from 1907 to 1913, they hatched this plan called the Aldrich Plan to create a central bank that ostensibly would stop these bank runs. No, 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 no. What it did is it gave non-federal power to create money. And Thomas Jefferson said this very clearly in the 1790s. He said, look, if the American people ever allow banks to issue currency, they will wind up penniless and homeless on the shores of the country that their forefathers founded. Powerful stuff from 1790s. So here we are, we seed money creation to the Aldrich plan. And this guy wrote this book and I actually can't remember the name of it, but he, if you, if you just Google vampire octopus from 1910, mm -hmm. it'll pop up. It looks like a Kraken and it's got its tentacles around companies yeah, I've and, seen banks, that. and it's up chucking the money into yeah, I've seen that. The central I've bank. Seen that. And, okay. I'll and here's the, and here's the crazy thing where life imitates art. So this, this will be weird. <laughs> People say, Mark, you're, you're crazy. So if anyone's seen the movie Stranger or the, the series Stranger Things, so in the movie or in this series, The Stranger Thing, there's this thing called the Mind Flayer. If you put a picture of the Mind Flayer next to this picture, they look exactly the same. Mm. And if you look at a picture of Hawking's National Institute and the Eccles building of the Fed, they look like the same building. Now, they're not the same building, but it, it's just kind of funny. But stranger things have happened in the sense that Amory Aldrich, most powerful man in Congress, got this bill passed. And shockingly, JP Morgan has been at the pinnacle of banking and finance ever since. 
And now you got the president of JP Morgan on Bitcoin <laughs> at Davos. Same. Mark believes the emergence of Bitcoin may threaten the system and change the way we view money and value, similar to how the internet transformed media and commerce. The CEO of JP Morgan recently spoke out against Bitcoin at Davos, and Yusko says this only highlights the significance and potential impact of cryptocurrency on the financial world. Here's my point. Like, guys, flip it around. You can judge the quality of an idea by the quality of its detractors. If mm. no one cared about Bitcoin, it would be a bad idea. If right, ignorant right, people right. cared, didn't you know cared, it'd be a bad right. idea. Bitcoin does to money and value what the internet did to media and commerce. And you know, it's funny we're talking about this on, on Netflix Day, right? But when I was growing up, I was owned, and I don't mean that in a bad kind of way, but ABC owned me. I would be in a chair eight o'clock on Tuesday night with my TV tray, watching Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley every Tuesday religiously. Right. They had my eyeballs, they had my attention, they had the advertising revenues because I was watching their shows. They owned all the content, they made the content. So how did their market cap go like this? And Netflix's market cap went like this. How did that happen? Because they didn't want to give up the good to go for the great. So they got disrupted by a subscription model, by a streaming model that said, we don't have to create the content right away. We just have to give people choice to watch when they want to watch what they want to watch. Then we'll create the content and we'll lock the people in and we'll get all your market cap. And that's exactly what happened. Because here's what the banks do. Look, FTX, bad guy, gal, and I don't think it was them. They're not the masterminds of anything. It's somebody way above them, but bad people did bad things. They stole right. money to funnel right. into political candidates, to curry favor and power. Great. It's, it's, a, it's a story as old as time. Bad people do bad things. But that was people's speculative money, right? Sure, right, 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 right. The right, bulk right, right. of their net worth. It wasn't it their day to day living right. expenses. It was right. their investment money. They were trading, they were speculating. And it's bad and it's horrible. And it is. And look, and I'm a victim of it myself. It's bad. But here's the thing what Wells Fargo did and what these other banks do is way more heinous. Oh my God. But the little stuff like this, like overdraft fees. Yeah. The way it works. Right? You're struggling, the average the person doesn't have $500 saved for an emergency, mm -hmm. and you write checks, and you're waiting for your paycheck to get in, you write checks. They actually have software that caches the withdrawals before yep. they process the deposit so they can steal overdraft fees. I mean, think about that. Instead of doing the opposite, which is to say, you know, you're our customer, and we want you to thrive, We'll hold, because we're big and we have some, you know, we have some cushion in our profits. We'll hold those withdrawals for a couple of days until your deposit comes in. They could do that and it wouldn't hurt them at all. In fact, it would give them Not a good and, and people would walk to them. But instead, they steal. Mark also points out that while the recent case of theft and political contributions at FTX is deplorable, it pales in comparison to the actions of banks like Wells Fargo. He talks about the banks withholding withdrawals for a few days until the deposits arrive, which would benefit the customer and not harm the bank in any way. He believes that this approach would result in increased customer satisfaction and higher profits for the banks, but instead they chose to exploit their customers. Mark also takes issue with the banking practices in the United States and accuses some of unethical and even illegal behavior where they have software in place that prioritizes withdrawals over deposits, allowing them to extract overdraft fees from their customers. What do you think about Mark Yusko's prediction for Bitcoin and the crypto market, as well as the historical pattern of financial institutions operating in such an unethical way? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.